Good day, everybody. I uh, hope everyone is well. Um, yeah, first of all, I just want to apologize for, you know, the amount of lighting. OK, uh, you know, uh, uh, in this case, uh, you know, I'm trying to work under, you know, this load shedding. Um, so yeah, I'm just using as much of uh, the natural light as possible. All right. So um, if you haven't subscribed, please uh, just be part of the family. Uh, you know, and for those of you who need assistance with mathematics or physical science, please uh, you're welcome to just get in touch with us. And our email address is info at mlungisinkosi.co.za. All right. So we're looking at uh, question nine. Uh, we've looked at the other questions. And obviously, that's based on electrostatics, okay, uh, electrodynamics, that is, uh, that's motors and generators, okay. So let's get right into it. They say a simplified diagram of an AC generator connected to a 25 ohm resistor is shown below. Uh, the coil rotates uh, anti clockwise, okay. So there they've given us the rotation of the, of our coil there. So they say name the component that distinguishes this generator from a DC generator. Of course, uh, those should be our slip rings there. Okay, so um, uh, we can actually write that down. All right, so we know that's going to be the slip rings. Okay they make sure that this becomes an AC generator. Um, yeah, all right. So they are asking us in which direction will the induced current flow in section XY of the coil? Okay, so uh, I've actually shown this in the past. All right, so let's try and do this one together. Okay, so remember, I'm going to use this cal uh, calculator uh, remember, so here's a uh, side XY. So it's telling us it's rotating anti-clockwise. Okay. So now, because this is a generator, remember, we're going to use our right hand rule, right? So we keep these at right hand to each other. So I can see that my, uh, um, you know, my, um, uh, you know, the field uh, is moving in that direction. But note in this case, my force is actually moving. Can you see? So I'm, I'm actually trying to illustrate that to you. My force on side XY, remember it's moving anti-clockwise. So it means that direction of, uh, 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 you know, rotation is downwards. Okay. So there is my force. I'm pointing into the page. There's my field in that direction. So therefore, here's my current actually moving in that direction. So it means that it would move from Y to X. Okay. Uh, so we're saying from Y to X. Okay. Right. And then uh, they give us a diagram there. All right. Um, they are asking us the graph below shows the output voltage of the generator for one cycle of rotation of the coil. Okay. They say define the term RMS potential difference. Hey, I've always hated that, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, RMS uh, definition. Okay. Uh, you can please, uh, please just look it up and verify it. Uh, uh, too lazy to do that. But uh, in this case, it's something about the equivalent DC, uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, just look it up um, and, and find it. Okay. Right. They say calculate the RMS current uh, in the circuit. Okay. So I'm... Uh, I'm just going to quickly skip to 9.4. Uh, so we want to find the average power uh, in uh, which is dissipated by the 25. Oh, no, no, no. Actually, now I'm actually skipping a question. Uh, calculate the RMS current rather uh, in the circuit. So uh, remember what we are given uh, is that we had the voltage here. But in this case, what we would have is the maximum voltage, right? So what I can do is let's find VRMS first. Okay, so VRMS, remember this would be V maximum divided by the square root of two. Okay, and we would say, well, uh, in this case, that's going to be 100 divided by root of two. Uh, and in this case, uh, what we get there, uh, so that's 100 divided by the square root of two. 
and I get a value of uh, 50 root 2 or you can say 70.71 okay uh, so that's 70.71 uh, volts okay uh, but I'm just going to keep this value because I want to use it in the next calculation uh, but we know now I can find I RMS which is actually V RMS divided by the resistance okay um, let's see so remember this is Ohm's law I I is equals to V over R so I could have actually found I max as well first and then use that I max to find uh, you know using Ohm's law again uh, I is V over R so in this case I've got that value of mine 70.71 which I've kept uh, uh, so that I avoid rounding off okay so in this case divided by the resistance remember resistance is 25 and what we simply get there so I'm going to divide by 25 take that entire value uh, I get a value of 2 root 2 or if you want to that's going to be 2.82 uh, 83 so that would be 2.83 uh, uh, MPS okay so that is our IRMS value all right okay and the next uh, question uh, simply says calculate the average power dissipated in the 25 ohm resistor okay so uh, now we've got quite a number of options we've got VRMS okay we've got IRMS uh, in fact fortunately I haven't removed it in my calculator so I can say P average is going to simply be I squared multiplied by R okay so uh, fortunately I still have that value or you could have said V squared remember uh, V RMS that value there uh, divided by the resistance uh, I RMS actually I should have uh, written that out I RMS squared okay multiplied by R so I'm just going to square that value and multiply it by 25 okay and I get an average power of 200 watts okay oh sorry I didn't substitute eh? yeah but you know it was that value there 2.83 squared multiplied by 25 okay and that gave you 200 watts okay right and uh, essentially let's continue to the next part uh, because it seems like we are still not done okay so the next section uh, they say the speed of the rotation of the coil in the generator is now doubled okay uh, they say copy the set of axes below in your answer book and sketch the graph of output voltage versus the time okay so they say for 0 0.1 seconds right so uh, I'm just going to keep uh, toggling between you know the previous graph and this one but if you just think about it when we calculate or in this case when we look at the speed of rotation okay remember that Faraday's law uh, simply says the output EMF in this case is uh, directly proportional to the rate of change of ma uh, magnetic flux right so in this case what are we doing we're increasing the speed of rotation it means that uh, the time that it takes for each cycle is now less okay and they did say that it's doubled so in this case it means that uh, to complete one cycle you take half the time uh, because it's the speed that is doubled okay so in this case what does uh, what does that tell us remember that we have a sinusoid in this case um, okay let me let me try and show those values so these are the values that we have there. of course I'm not going to draw it to scale uh, 0 0.025 there uh, you've got 0 0.05 you'll have 0 0.075 okay um, and you've got 0 0.1 over there now whereas our previous graph 
so let me draw the previous one so that we can be able to easily compare okay so that's our 0 0.1 value right so whereas our previous graph was this here so for the graph that we are supposed to draw okay i'm going to draw it in a different color okay it means now to complete one cycle i'm going to be able to complete it in half the time but what that also means is that now remember um, uh, you know the output emf is inversely proportional to time and in this case once i uh, decrease time what happens to the output emf it will increase uh, and because it's doubled, in this case, it means that our, uh, you know, our total uh, EMF, in this case, our maximum would now be 200. Okay. So remember, I need to complete one cycle here. So I'd have 200 over there. I'd have minus 200 over there. So it means now my output EMF would be something like this. Uh, sorry, uh, actually, I should make this uh, far much bigger uh, in that case because this would now be 200. Uh, it's twice that, so that would be minus 200. Okay, um, so uh, obviously you'd repeat that cycle again. Okay, and you'd have between those two that should be minus 200 again all right so for a time of 0 0.1 uh, our maximum uh, and by the way please remember that you must label your graph okay that's volts and that's time in seconds okay right and essentially that is that would so the blue graph would be your your output uh, uh your new output emf okay uh, your output emf graph that is all right and we would have gotten ourselves those 15 marks okay and i hope that was uh, easy to follow and uh, that you uh, also enjoy it okay right and please i hope that this doesn't stress you out in any way uh, but i'm trying to explain it in a way that makes sense to all of us all right and i'll see you guys next time please don't forget to tell your brothers your sisters your cousins uh, you know your uncle your aunts everyone who's doing physical science uh, that you know we're using this channel to try and empower as many as we possibly can physics is really really easy and uh, in this case, if it, if, if it is just explained in the right way. Okay. All right. And I'll see you guys again next time. Shop, shop.